In 2021, I set out to do a crusade in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. There was a massive, obviously, lockdowns and restrictions were everywhere in Saskatchewan. Mass mandates, um, crowd size restrictions. And I had told the Lord, because he told me, you need to go out and do that crusade. I felt it in my spirit. So I contacted a church there, several churches. We came together. We had the plans to do it. But I didn't give the green light to my crusade director because I didn't want to do I told the Lord, I don't want to do a crusade if there's going to be crowd size restrictions. I don't want to do a crusade if there's 50 people allowed at a park that, you know, we rented out that would have had the ability to house... Uh, you know, 500 to 1,000 people. I didn't want to do that. I wasn't going to have, I wasn't going to turn anyone back from hearing the gospel. I didn't feel like it would be right to do it, to hold the event if that were the case, but I felt the Lord telling me to do the event. So I said, Lord, if you want me to do this event, you need to make all things work together for my good. You need to somehow orchestrate it so that the restrictions are lifted, even if it's briefly. Even if it's just a, a, a reprieve for a couple of weeks so we can plan everything and get it done. But I, I'm not going to give the green light until I have guarantee that we're not going to have to turn anyone away from that event. Six weeks before the event, the days that we had planned for that event um, were to come. The governor of Saskatchewan, Scott Moe, gives out like an executive law or decision, I don't know what you want to call it, but he essentially signs a, a law into a motion that removed all the mass mandates and outdoor gathering restrictions for the period of one month, for the month of July or it was the month of July into August 15th. I think it was July 15th to August 15th. He signed that in. He said from July 15th to August 15th. Our crusade was August 4 to 6, something like that. We had three days. And I took that as the Lord, literally making everything work out for the good of this event. Like, I mean, whole provincial mandates were removed so that we can have this event without any hindrance and without any restrictions. That's a classic example of me being in line with my purpose. Remember, he works all things together for good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. If you're doing something God's called you to do, it's impossible for things not to work out in your favor. That's what happened. The whole province for a, a span of one month had zero restrictions. We went and did that event, and then August 15th, just a week or two weeks later, it was like 11 days later, the restrictions were back into place, and I didn't care if they were in place after that. I was already out. We did the event. We had 186 people saved that, that, uh, for those three days, and it was a great success. But that's a classic example of if you're doing, and I want to encourage you today, if you're out doing the will of God, you know, you're in Bible college. And uh, you've gotten to a place now where financially you need help. You think God's stupid? And, and you, you know the demand of Bible college is, is way too strong for you to have seven different jobs and, and pay for it all. Do you think God's stupid? Do you think he, he's going to call you to Bible college and not take into account that you need resources so that you don't become a glorified beggar? He'll make things work together. He'll cause men to give them to your lap, and you'll experience the supernatural provision of the Lord in the midst of it all. See, how could, how could you ever experience the supernatural provision of the Lord unless you were in a place where you needed that provision? Howard Carter feels led by God to take over a struggling Bible college. And 
There's so many kids at the Bible college, but they don't have enough money to support the whole thing. And they had just purchased a building and had a mortgage with a bank that within 30 days they had to come up with a certain amount of money or else they were going to repossess the entire Bible college. And Howard Carter literally inherits this financial pressure when he assumes the presidency of the college. And he believes God that he's going to have the money before day 30 of when the bank had threatened to repossess the, the building if they didn't have the money. All throughout that month, the Bible college students are fasting, praying, they're sweating. I mean, everyone's running helter-skelter. Howard Carter's the only one that's going business as usual, having breakfast every day, teaching his classes. He's not worried one bit. But by faith, he kept confessing that when, when we need the money, by the, we don't need the money today. We have 30 days. By the time the deadline comes, we'll have the need met. Don't worry. And so the night before the bank was to come and repossess the building, he goes and checks the mail, and there's a bunch of mail, and he goes and puts it on his desk. And the Lord tells him, before you go to bed, open up that envelope. There was a thick envelope. And he, he wanted to go to bed. And the Lord rebuked him and said, go and open, that, up, open up that envelope. So he goes, grabs the envelope, opens it up. And there was a thick wad of cash, British pounds, stacked up for more than the amount that they needed to pay off the entire building for that Bible college. The next day, he comes as it was his usual. He went to eat breakfast, and there he had was a stack of cash right next to him, right next to his scrambled eggs and bacon. And the whole Bible college came out in awestruck wonder, marveling at the faith of Howard Carter. Howard Carter was a man that understood. See, that's where great faith comes. It's in a restful assurance that if I'm on the path that God has me on. A good man's steps are ordered of the Lord. And it's impossible for me to end in a place of shame or an embarrassment. This will turn out for my favor. Listen to this, Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. For the Lord has taken away your judgments, he's cast out your enemy, the king of Israel is in your midst, you will see disaster no more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, don't fear, Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, the mighty one will save you, he will rejoice over you with gladness, he will quiet you with his love, he will rejoice over you with singing, and I will gather those who now sorrow over the appointed assembly, who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time, listen to this, at that time, at the appointed time. Remember, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he shall exalt you. There's a due time. See, God's working behind the scenes right now. But in due time, you're going to see with your very own eyes that God will deal with all who afflict you. And he will save the lame. And he will gather you who have been driven out. Listen to this. I will appoint you for fame and for praise in every land where you were formerly put to shame. And at that time, I will bring you back. Praise the Lord. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. It's impossible for you to be on the go for God and there not be a time where God in heaven vindicates you here on the earth and appoints you, as we read, for fame and for praise in every area where you had been challenged in. I prophesy in Jesus' name, today marks your day of turnaround. That no matter the pressure 
of persecution you've suffered by the hands of any devil or any man who has set himself against your forward movement, this shall turn to you for a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. You're ordained to win. God, no devil can overthrow what God has ordained. No devil can cancel out whom God has commanded to go. No devil can finish off any man whom God has started off. When God starts you out, the devil can't finish you off. What God starts, he'll bring to completion. He that began a good work in you will bring to fullness and completion. No matter the plans of the devil, the plan of heaven shall prevail. Job said no purpose of God can be, can be thwarted. You're called according to that purpose. Therefore, you get to enjoy the same invincibility that God enjoys. The same way God can't be knocked out of the race, you will not be knocked out of the race. The same way God can't be defeated, you get to assume that same sense and power for, for, for undefeatability, undefeatability in life because you're walking in divine purpose. Nobody could kill Jesus before his time. Many times they picked up stones to throw him, but he was walking according to his purpose and he passed through the midst of them and passed on. Nobody could kill Paul before his purpose was done. Nobody can take him out. Nobody was able to kill John, the, the apostle. The Bible says they tried, they, um, they, they, he was exiled on the island called Patmos. And if you study history, they actually exiled him because they tried to kill him by boiling him in, in oil. And they couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. He was invincible. He was undefeatable. So they exiled him to Patmos. Why? Why couldn't they kill him? Because he still had purpose in life. He still had to write that book of Revelation to, to talk about the things to come, to talk about the messages that were to be given to the seven churches that were on the earth in that day. He still had purpose. He still had destiny. And as a result, he couldn't be defeated. He couldn't be wiped out. He couldn't be taken out because he was walking in line with divine purpose. I want you to write this in the comment section today. Say, I will walk in my purpose. I will walk in my purpose. Because I'm telling you, it all hangs on those final two sections of that verse. Those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You can't do your own thing and expect God to bless your plans. But when you get into his plans, they're auto-blessed. Auto-blessed. They're pre-programmed to be blessed and to succeed. Hallelujah.